this is Wendy, the Pep Talk Girl, and I'm sitting here with Jules. Hello. And today we're talking about transitions. And I met Jules about a week ago. We went to coffee and we got to talking and we learned that we're both coming through a pretty challenging transition, but we're both coming out on the other side. I talk about my experiences on the blog, thepeptopgirl.com, and Jules has been kind enough to share her story with us today. So Jules, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I, um, I just recently completed my doctoral studies and um, then discovered that I need to raise some funding so that I can continue and um, do my research and get my doctorate. Okay, so uh, when we talked, you uh, said that there was a period in your life where things began to take a turn. Tell us about that. Well, I, um, I went through a divorce in 2005 and my two youngest children decided to go live with their father. And so at the time, um, I was working on in the university and I didn't have anywhere else to go because the child support money was paying for where I was living with the children. So I went to live in a dorm and I wrote my uh, thesis and defended it while I was there for 15 and a half weeks. And then once those 15 and a half weeks passed, I had graduated and I went to I took jobs in Kansas to teach and moved to Kansas. So you kind of say um, before when we talked that when you went to Kansas that you considered it to be running away, like you mm -hmm. ran away <laughs> to Kansas, yeah. but I just think who runs away to Kansas, <laughs> but that's how you feel like you were kind of escaping your life. Yes. And I think you talked about how you did actually get a job, but then you learned that you wouldn't be getting paid for a while. So how did you deal with that? Well, it was very um, frustrating, but I just stayed in the moment. I ran out and, and um, I had a, a teaching job lined up that I was going to be paid on the 28th of July. Um, and I had two other teaching jobs, but they were going to end in October. And so I made the decision to give those two sections up because I would have been in the middle of the semester without work otherwise. Um, and then I scrambled it, uh, went to Manpower and some other temp agencies and signed up and started um, taking some shifts doing um, buffet work and that kind of thing. And, and I was asking before, did you, did you eat in the buffet? Oh, no, 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 no I, I was living, I was living on oatmeal and water at the time with some salad on special occasions, basically. Um, and how did you how did you <laughs> feel when you were going through this really difficult time? You were a grown woman. You had very little money. And how did, what did you think about your life? And how did you manage to stay focused so you could continue to move forward? Well, I fortunately I stayed very busy with preparing lesson plans and um, working at the buffet. And I was able to get a job at Staples, and so I worked for Staples in their copy center. Um, and I just stayed focused on the now. Um, I did a little bit of research while I was teaching, while I was working odd jobs. Um, found out that um, I could move to Kansas City and take teaching jobs there, and I applied and was hired on in a couple of community colleges out there. And so I moved to Kansas City um, from um, from out by the by Fort Riley, basically. Um, so it worked out okay, but I had to stay focused on the now, and I had to deal with what was going on in the moment, uh, because it was survival. <laughs> yeah, and, and you mentioned before that you, know, you kind of did anything that you could do, like you uh, apparently mowed lawns. Yes. Yes, and I painted inside the college, and I tutored before I taught um, for an hourly wage, and whatever I could do, I mowed yards. My landlord let me mow the yard to knock off $20 a week off of my rent, which was a huge thing. It really helped a lot. And you talked about how um, you'd gone on a date and how you felt after yeah. that. Well, actually, during. <laughs> um, I, I actually had to leave the table the first time I went on a date because I, saw, I had something other than oatmeal to eat, and I was so thankful that I cried. So I so think he thought I was a little weird. <laughs> But it, it worked out because then you met another guy. Yes, I did. I met my husband in Kansas City, Missouri over lunch. <laughs> and then when you two um, got married, 
you both kind of faced um, some challenges in terms mm -hmm. of financially. He had to move for a job. Yes. And tell us about that. Yes. Well, um, at the time that we met, he was working for a company that eventually, after we were married, um, closed its doors. And so he was in transition at that time. And I was also in transition because the college system that I was working for had a reduction of 20% of their enrollment. And so I went into temporary administrative support and he found a job. Um, and so we moved and then I found another job right away and using that experience and then was able to teach and work with students um, as well as doing that job, um, which was wonderful. And um, we were we were there for three years and then we moved again. <laughs> so so it like both of you just kind of you kept going somehow. Yes. How did you keep your spirits up during this time of you being in transition by yourself and then you meet a guy, he's wonderful, you get married, and then you're still facing challenges. How yes. do you manage to keep your spirits up? Well, I think that in so many ways when we go through transition it prepares us for the next time. Mm -hmm. We become stronger and I think we become more thankful for the things that we have when we go through losses and so it helps us to keep going um, because we know that if things became worse they can also become better right mm -hmm. you know and that. that's that's life you know we have ups and downs and we don't really know what's around the corner and I think that's one of the greatest things about life that it's a big adventure mm -hmm. we don't know what's gonna happen next yeah and the next thing could be fantastic exactly so how is life now? It's wonderful. I'm doing fine. I'm still in transition, of course. I'm waiting for a, a college level teaching or advising position. And meanwhile, I'm substitute teaching and really enjoying it, and stretching and growing in new ways. So what would be, um, I guess, a takeaway for people um, regarding how you have managed to continue to put one foot in front of the other and just keep going? And in the midst of all of it, remain grateful and to really it seems like you have really found a sense of peace about yourself and about your experience yes I have it really comes down to faith for me and is there anything any strategies that you've used to um, keep your faith um, uplifted uplifted and to keep yourself um, focused on I guess what's ahead as opposed to looking back I think sometimes we get uh, trapped in looking at back at all the things that haven't worked out mm -hmm. as opposed to motivating ourselves to move forward to figure out what we can do to make that next thing even better. Do you have any strategies that you use in your own life to do that? I do look back. I look back and I see how far I've come. Mm -hmm. You, you look know? at the progress and not the I pain. Mean, it, well, I look at both, but I, I think that having balance is important. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's important to own all of it. And we don't learn anything if we don't look back either. And we can learn so much and use it, you know, and that's the purpose for it is learning about ourselves and how things work and what things don't work. And, and then we're able to apply that. Well, they so, always say that um, there is no testimony without a test. Exactly. So I want to thank Jules for sharing her story with me, the Pep Talk Girl. So, for more information, inspiration, and motivation, please go to thepeptalkgirl.com. And thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Jules, for sharing your story with us. Thank you.